Good day everyone. My name is Lizelle S. Lorenzo from BSN English 1A and my report is all about acculturation model. But before we can go to our main topic, let us first define what is acculturation theory. Acculturation theory is defined as exchange of cultural features when two or more different cultures comes in contact or continuous contact. Sharing of differences in cultures, this may alter or change a culture but still remain distinct from each other. Now we all know what, what is acculturation theory, the base or the root of acculturation model. Acculturation model is a second language acquisition model designed by John H. Schumann in 1978. Let us first know who is John Schumann. John H. Schumann is a professor of applied linguistics and former chair of the Department of Applied Linguistics and TESL at UCLA. His research includes language acquisition, the neurobiology of language, the neurobiology of learnings, and the language evolution. So what is acculturation model? This model is based on the social psychology of acculturation. Acculturation model maintains that certain social and psychological variables cluster into a single variable, acculturation. What is acculturation? Acculturation means the process by which a human being acquires the culture of particular society from infancy. Learners will acquire the target language to the degree they acculturate to the target language group. There are two types of acculturation. First one is learners are socially integrated with the TL group and develop sufficient contacts with TL speakers to enable them to acquire the target language. Second is learners consciously or unconsciously desire to adopt the lifestyle of values of the TL group. Both types of acculturation are important to provoke acquisition of the TL. Social and psychological contact with the target language group is the essential element in acculturation. But adopting the values and lifestyle of the target language group is not necessary. Acculturation may affect by two factors, social factors and affective factors or the psychological variables. Under social factors, we have dominance, non-dominance, subordination, assimilation, acculturation, preservation, cohesiveness, attitude, and intended length of the residents of the TL area. And under affective factors or the psychological variables, we have language shock, culture shock, motivation, and ego permeability. Next, we have the eight factors of social distance. We have social dominance, integration patterns, enclosure, cohesiveness, size, cultural congruence, attitude, and intended length of residence. The first one is social dominance. Social dominance is simply defined as one culture is on a higher hierarchy. The much superior hierarchy greatly influences the much inferior culture. For example, Spain is more dominant than the Philippines and China. Integration patterns involve assimilation, preservation, and adaptation. Assimilation means the culture gives up its own lifestyle to adapt to the culture. It maximizes contact between the cultures and enhances the acquisition. Assimilation is the state or condition of being assimilated or being absorbed into something. The process of adopting the language and culture of a dominant social group or nation or the state of being socially integrated into the culture of the dominant group in a society. Preservation maintains its own lifestyle and rejects the target group's language acquisition. It creates a rift between the two groups making the acquisition of the target groups. As I've said, preservation simply means it maintains its own lifestyle and rejects 
the target or the TL group language acquisition. The third one is adaptation. Adaptation, this is the strategy that adopts the target group's lifestyle and language but also maintaining its own lifestyle and values. This strategy yield varied degrees of language. Adaptation welcome new knowledge or welcome the TL groups but also preserve or maintain its own lifestyle. The next one is enclosure. Enclosure means the degree of sharing cultural construction. For example, schools, churches, clubs, facilities, trades, profession, and other things. We have two types of enclosure, the high enclosure and low enclosure. High enclosure means the two groups have their own social construct, making the acquisition of the second language. In low enclosure, the two groups share the social construct, therefore making the acquisition of the second language much easier. The fourth one is cohesiveness. If the second language learning group is firm or cohesive, the members tend to separate itself to the target language group. This makes second language acquisition harder to accomplish. Cohesiveness is important because the ability of a group to work well together often depends on its cohesion. Group cohesion allowed a group, group to work together through conflicts and emerge as a stronger group. Group cohesion also influences group members to find resolution to conflict and preserve the group relationships. The fifth one is size. A large population of the second language learning group, then it makes language acquisition more difficult. Conflicts may emerge between them. It simply means the smaller the size, the easier the language acquisition. The bigger the size, it makes language acquisition more difficult. The next one is cultural congruence. Similarity between two groups. If the two groups are similar, then second language acquisition is easier for the language learning group to grasp target language. The next one is attitude. If the target group and the language learning group have positive attitudes towards one another, there will be less barriers between the two groups from learning the target language. The last one is intended length of residence. If the second language learning group intends to stay in the target language or for a longer time, it is likely for them to learn the language intensively. A lengthy stay would promote second language acquisition. So in conclusion, a culturation model is a conceptual framework which permits the interpretation and understanding of success or failure in SLA in various contact situations. This theory attempts to explain the relationship between learners, second language acquisition, and their social and psychological factor, and it helps to prove the importance of social factor in second language acquisition. That's all and thank you.